Hi friends, and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Eric Sun, and I'm entering my first year of medical school at McMaster University. Today, I'll be giving you my eight easy tips and tricks to help you score a 131 on the critical analysis and reasoning skills section of the MCAT. After I took my first diagnostic test, I scored a 123 on the CAR section, and I was really discouraged by that. But after three months of practice and a lot of trial and error, I managed to score a 131 on the real thing. That's why I'm a firm believer in practice. If I can do it, then you can too. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. It really does help the channel and help me very much. If anything in this video really helps you, leave a comment down below on how it helped. The CAR section is testing you on your ability to understand and synthesize information that's presented to you. Your performance in the section doesn't depend on any external information you might know, but it does depend on your natural reading speed and ability. But that's not to say it can't be improved with practice. Here it's important to note that it's practice, not studying. Unlike chemistry or biology or physics, you don't need to memorize any facts or formulas, you just need to see what's in the passage and what's given to you. You might not be used to reading passages about art and economics and philosophy. In fact, you're probably more used to reading for fun, without any time pressure. That's why practice is so important. You have to practice reading about topics you may know nothing about under a time pressure limit. You can only improve by putting in the hours. A mistake I made when I first started practicing was focusing too much on the time. I knew that I had about 10 minutes for each passage, so I was always rushing to try to finish and under that. That was actually counterproductive for me because sure, I did finish quickly, but I ended up getting a lot of them wrong. And what's the point if you can't get any right? Learn from my mistakes. I cannot stress the importance of accuracy enough. After realizing that I wasn't really making any progress in improving, I changed up my way of practicing. I focused on understanding the passage and answering the questions without the pressure of time. I would start by aiming for at least 75% accuracy for a passage. And then, as slowly as I got better at that, then I would add in the time pressure. But not 10 minutes yet. A little bit longer, like 15 minutes. And then, as I improved with that, decreasing that time to 14, 13, 12, 11, until eventually I reached my goal of 10. But then, once I got there, I even tried to lower it further, to 9 minutes or 8 minutes actually giving myself less time to do the passage than I would have actually given. By doing passages a little bit faster, I was able to save a lot of time once I started adding on other passages. After I hit around the eight minute mark for a passage, I would add another passage. So I would do two passages at eight minutes each. Once I got comfortable with that, I would add another one and another one and another one until I was doing nine passages in one sitting. That's what I mean by over-preparing. Giving yourself less time than you actually have so that you can have a bank of time at the end to go over your flight questions and have a second thought and perspective. The car section really likes to throw in some distractor answers to try to throw you off. Some answers just make no sense at all. They sound ridiculous and sometimes aren't even related to the passage. But some people will be tempted to choose them if they don't understand the passage well. Some answers are objectively correct, but aren't actually related to the passage. When you're looking at these kinds of answers, you have to ask yourself, does this really answer the question? These often reference specific details that are really memorable from the passage, but these are there purposefully to try to throw you off from the right side. Some answers are actually the opposite of what the author is saying. They sound relevant and they sound vaguely correct because they're hinting at the same thing, but it's actually, again, the opposite of what the author is saying. It's not their main focus. Finally, some answers may draw upon your personal biases. For these answers, you really have to forget any outside information and remember that everything you need is actually within the passage. Put yourself in the author's shoes and imagine what's going on in their head. Well, maybe not these shoes, but you know what I mean. To make sure you're avoiding all of these traps, you have to work on, firstly, understanding the passage and the main idea. Secondly, go about actually answering the question at hand, and thirdly, choosing an answer that the author would agree with, not just something that you might agree with outside of the passage. Finally, you should take note to look at all of the answer choices. The first answer you choose might be there to throw you off. If it sounds kind of right, you might just not look at the answer choices and move on. That's exactly what you want to avoid. The most important part of practicing 
is going over your mistakes and recognizing what went wrong so that you can improve for next time. For me, I kept a log of all my car's mistakes. I found for me most often is that I would second guess myself and I would originally have an answer correct and then I would change it for some silly reason that I came up with during the heat of the moment. By keeping this kind of log, you can see what kind of mistakes you make most frequently so that next time you can try to avoid those in the future. In my practice, I realized that if you got the main idea of a passage, more often than not, you get most of the answers correct without understanding all of the confusing, technical, or boring aspects of the passage. Read to understand what the author is trying to say. Are they trying to persuade you of something? Are they telling you something objectively? Ask yourself what the author is trying to do. By reading actively and asking yourself these questions, the author's focus should become more clear. Then, when you're going over the questions, you already have a good framework for what the author is trying to say. Sometimes you might come across a question asking for an author's point of view. Boom, you've already saved a lot of time because you've planned these before. Ultimately, having a good grasp on the main idea of the passage will save you a lot of time having to go back and revisit the passage to look for the specific details. The bottom line is, again, to try to put yourself in the author's shoes. This will help you get more answers correct and help you save more time as the test goes on. When I was practicing, I remember focusing a lot on hard questions at first. The ones that just stopped and made me think for a while and just stuck with me throughout the entire test. It might have been in the first passage, a really hard question came up and I was just thinking about it the entire time. And that took away from my focus and my attention for the rest of the passages and probably made me do a lot worse. What I learned is there's a lot of hard questions and sometimes you don't need to know everything. You don't need to understand the specifics and technicalities of economic theory, but if you get the main idea of the passage, that should be able to guide you close enough to the right answer. Additionally, if you feel a question is hard, trust that you are a confident reader and everyone else in the room is probably feeling that too. You're not alone. That being said, if you get to a hard question, try to eliminate some of the answer choices you know that are wrong. If you have four choices at a start and you can cross out two, you've already improved your chances to 50-50. Then, if you're stuck between a few choices, just choose one based on the best of your ability, flag it, and then move on. The extra time you spend on that one question could cost you five or six questions that you don't even get a chance to attempt down the road. Remember that if you have time at the end of the section, you could always come back and take another look at it with a fresh perspective. Remember that if you felt a question was hard, odds are everyone else around you felt it too. You're not writing the test alone, but what separates the people that score well and the people that don't is the ability and perseverance to struggle through those hard questions. After hard passage, you may feel confused and might be dwelling on the passage a little bit still. If this is the case for you, I would really recommend taking a five to 10 second break, closing your eyes and just thinking about someplace happy. For me, I was thinking about going back home and actually eating a slice of cake to celebrate. Also, if you find yourself losing focus during the passage, it wouldn't hurt to take a five to 10 second break as well and think about something relaxing. All in all, you might take three minutes of break during the entire section. And for some people that may feel like a long time, especially when you're running out of time at the end. But that three minutes break is really invaluable to your test day performance and will only serve to help you. I think the most important tip and the shortest tip is to trust your gut. For me, I found that oftentimes I would change my answer from the right one to the wrong one. And that cost me a lot of questions when I was practicing. I learned to trust my gut instinct at first and then only change that answer if I was certain that something else was correct. Lastly, I want to talk about what you should be doing before your test date. The MCAT is a marathon and not a sprint. Study burnout is a real thing. Make sure you're taking time to get enough sleep, get enough exercise, do things that you really like to do, like a new hobby or sports. Being alone by yourself for hours and hours on end can be really counterproductive. Most importantly, make sure you're talking to your support system, your friends, family, and loved ones around you, and tell them how they can best be supporting you through this time. So these were eight easy tips to help you improve your CARS score on the MCAT. I hope that you take something meaningful out of this video. Comment below with your favorite tip and how it helped you. Uh, it's great to have you here. I had a lot of advice from my friends in medical school, and I'm really excited to pay that forward. Uh, that being said, also comment below with any ideas for future videos that you want to see. That's your daily dose of Medi Sun. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.